have a pack of grapes. They happen to be table grapes. If we look at a, at a grape, what we're actually looking at is um, a dispersal vessel for the grapevine. Grapevines have evolved a very close relationship with birds, and it's birds that eat the grapes and spread the seed. So that's why they're coloured. It's also why they're sweet. So they're coloured as a signal that the seed's ready to disperse, and they're sweet. That's a nutritional reward for the bird. When we make wine, there's a couple of really important things that we need to measure in the grape to make sure we make good wine. One of those is sugar. So grapes will contain sugar, and remember that's what is a reward for the birds. But for us as winemakers, that sugar gets turned into alcohol. So yeast turns sugar into alcohol, and that's how we make wine. The other really important component of a grape is, is acid. So we need acid in grapes because it gives wine freshness, but it also protects the wine from something called microbial spoilage. So if we don't have acid in the wine, it will oxidise, it will go brown, it will end up tasting awful. So when we make wine, we need to make sure that we measure our grapes and we have the right level of acid and we have the right level of sugar in the grape. Sugar makes up around about our 10 to 12% of the grape. The acidity is around about pH 3, 3.5. Grapes are kind of between orange juice and lemon juice. But that acidity, as I said, is very important. So what we do to, um, to measure these things is we need to crush the grapes. So I'm going to put the grapes into a, a, a plastic bag and we'll gently crush them. And what that does it, is it releases the juice in a similar way to how you would release the juice when you were making wine. Because the juice comes from the inside the grape, there's not that much colour to it. It's not bright red like the outside of the grape. The colour for, bear, for grapes um, is mainly in the skin. It's not in the flesh. Normally I would filter this through muslin, but for the purposes of today's demonstration, we'll just measure it unfiltered. What I have here is a digital refractometer, and this is what we use to measure sugar. Um, the way it works is that the more sugar in the solution, the more it will bend a beam of light. So the higher the level of sugar in the solution, the more the light actually bends. To do this, we just need to turn on the refractometer, add some juice. 12, so 21.6 degrees bricks equals 12 Beaumet points. So if we were to ferment this to dryness, so if all the sugar was used by the yeast to make alcohol, the wine would be 12% alcohol. So that's why it's important to know um, sugar content. Next, we'll measure acid. So the way we do that is just with this pH meter. Um, there's an electrode. I've actually calibrated this with pH 4 and pH 7. So there are my calibration solutions. I've already calibrated this. I will just clean the tip. There's a temperature sensor with this um, pH electrode, so we, we calibrate it for temperature. And that's reading 3.50. So that's, that's kind of average acidity for grapes. That's quite good for making wine. That pH will change and we might change it. So the sugar content, 12 BOMO points, so we end up with about 12% alcohol. The acidity, 3.5, that's reasonably acidic. That will do a good job of protecting the wine, but it will also change during fermentation. 